Brother Tony, who, is, who will share with us from the Word of God this morning time. Can we clap our hands and welcome him? Good morning, church. Uh, I thought the mic was not working. How are you all today? It's going to be one-way communication. I thought we'll have two ways. How are you all today? Good? Thank you. There are a lot of things that I wanted to prepare, as always. But God woke me up by 4 o'clock and He gave me a different message. The good news is it's going to be a short message. But nevertheless, I want a lot to lead. For the month, in the beginning of this month, I was actually praying about what God you have for this month. What is that you want to tell me? How is that you want to encourage me? For the people who receive my Bible words every day, you would know what was the words for this month. But God very clearly spoke to me that he is going to shut all the doors of destructions. Hallelujah. There will be destructions. There will be disappointments. There will be challenges. There will be mocking. There would be everything that the Satan wants to plan against you and me. Everything will be there around us. But God's promise is that he's going to shut the doors of destruction. Hallelujah. Nobody seems to be happy about it. Let's read one verse from Bible. This is the word that God spoke to me for this month. Genesis 7 verse 16. Those that entered male and female of every creature entered just as God has commanded him. The last line is what encourages me. Then God shut him in. It was not Noah that shut the door. God knows when to shut the door, when to open the door, and he shuts the door the way that nobody can open, and he opens the door the way that nobody can shut it again. When God shut the door, you know what was the advantage? You know, every creature was inside. You know how much an elephant can eat. You know how much the rest of the animals can eat for 40 days and more. If God can feed all the animals, your households, your family, everybody, that's what God is going to do this month. He's going to put you inside his ark, not in your place, not the place that you have chosen for you. But God is going to put you and me inside his ark. He's going to fill it with all the provisions. He's going to give you everything that you need to survive for the amount of time that you're going to stay inside this ark. And then he's going to shut it. Why is he going to shut it? Just because he doesn't want you to go out. Just because he doesn't want you to go out and have fun. Just because he doesn't want you to go to Wanderla. No, 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 no. God is going to shut his ark because he knows that is destructions outside. He knows that there's going to be a flood outside. He knows that the people who are mocking you outside is going to be completely destroyed. The people who are challenging you all this while laughing at you, laughing at Noah for going ahead and building such a big ark when there was no sign of rain, there was no handful of cloud there. Everybody was mocking at him, laughing at him. The people who were laughing at you at your office, in your colleges, in your school, in your workplace, in your society, in, your, in the apartment that you were living, they would see how God is going to protect you inside this ark this month. Believe it, and whoever believes it, receives it in the name of the Lord. Amen? But that's not the message for today. But that's a different message. Now, I was asking God, okay, fine. What is that you want to speak about when you shut the door? The Bible in different places speaks about seal, the seal of God. Now, what is sealing? You all have gone through the examinations. You have your question papers. The authority or the people in authority seal it so that nobody else can open it. Nobody else can see it until the time has come. That is the time destined for each one of us, yes or no? How many of you believe that God has a plan for us? 
I see a few hands. How many of you believe that there is no plan for us from God? You guys took me back to my school days. You know what happened? I was not a good student. I was an average student. So at times teachers ask, you know, how many of you know the answer? Raise the hands. First bench, five people raises their hand. How many of you don't know this answer? Last bench, two, two person will be raising their hands. Teacher will be confused. In between the people who are sitting, do you know the answer or you don't know the answer? You know the answer, I can teach you. You don't know the answer. I mean, you know the answer, I'm happy. You don't know the answer, I can teach you. That's how it is. You know God has a plan for you? Few hands is up. You know God does not have a plan for you? No hands up. Now, rest of the people, do you know or not that God has a plan and a purpose for you? Everybody knows, right? So we all have to wait for that purpose. God will definitely go ahead and fulfill that purpose. But I was a person who was very introvert. I never thought I would pick up this mic and talk once. I never thought in my wildest dream that I can ever speak English. There was one friend of mine in Wipro 2003 when I was in Wipro. His name was Rajan. Anywhere if he's listening to this YouTube channel, probably he would know. I still remember. I always used to run away from people because they all spoke to me in English and I could not respond to them in English. And one fine day this guy caught me and he's like, why do you always run away when I come here, when the gang comes here? I'm like, you guys talk in English, I can't speak in English. Then he was in local Tamil day and Nanu local danda. I have to speak because that's how I get paid. And I, I built up my confidence staying with this guy. He taught me how to speak in English. He always was with me when I felt low. So there are a lot of reasons that we give to run away from God's purpose. God wants every one of us to go ahead and work something for his kingdom. But we say that, oh, I cannot go and speak to that person. I don't know how he will respond. I cannot go and evangelize here because that's not my area. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. I have a lot of reasons to tell. Everybody has reasons. Yes, we all have a reason. And if I have to give reason, I can give reasons that nobody can think about. From childhood, I've been giving reasons to my teachers, my parents, everybody around me. So I can give good reasons, but don't take me as an example. Ephesians chapter 1 and 13. Let's read about seal. What is God telling about seal? Let me read. It says, in him... You also were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed. The seal of God is with everybody, but you, it will operate in your life. You will experience it in your life only when you believe it. Can we say believe it? We have to believe that God is with me. We have to believe that that is the seal of God on me. We have to believe that God has a purpose in my life. We have to believe that God has empowered me to fulfill this purpose. All this belief together will work miracles in your life. Otherwise, all these things are there, but it does not have value. It's like sleeper cells. You heard about sleeper cells? There's all this promise of God. It will be like sleeper cells in your life as long as you activate it through your faith and belief. Many a times I have thought that God is done with me. There is nothing new that's going to happen in my life until I realized that he has set everything till my last breath and even beyond. Just that I need to operate it. I need to believe and say, yes, God has a purpose. Here I am, Lord. Surrender is what he is looking at. The moment you say, God, here I am, use it. He doesn't need our talents. He does not need our wealth. He does not need our positions or whatever we have. He doesn't need that. All he needs is our obedience and our perseverance in the midst of all the storm that comes in our life. God had sealed you and me, but why do you think God has sealed us? Because he wants us to be a game changer. He wants us to be a game changer. We might be coming through a different background or difficult background or the background that does not encourage us or empower us to go ahead and do something for the Lord. We might get up, we get dressed, we go to school, we go to office, we go to wherever we want to go that day. We come back, we sleep and we say, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. God is asking at you, I gave you a beautiful day. What did you give me back? I gave you food, I gave you good travel, I gave you protection, I gave you money, I gave you work, I gave you income, I gave you everything. What did you give me back? 
Lord, I prayed five minutes when I started. I said, God, protect me. You asked. You did not give anything to me. You asked for protection. You said, God, give me good food. You asked for food. What did you give me in back? Did you have time to sit with me and talk? I was seeing a small clipping. One of the women was asking, how many times do, do you think my husband and I communicate every day? Everybody was like, every day? No, no, no. We speak only on Wednesdays because Monday, Tuesday, he is busy with the office. Again, Thursday, Friday, he has to go for a different work. Saturday, Sunday is busy. We go out, we, we, we do whatever we want to do, we clean the house and all. So we speak only on Wednesday. How do you think the relationship will be? Over a period of time, you wouldn't have any relationship. Then why is that we speak to God only on Sundays? We hear the word of God only on Sundays. So rest of the day, God my way. On Sunday, Lord your way, here I am. I surrender myself to you, to your word. Lord, I'm hearing your word. Just imagine how the relationship will be. The husband and wife talks only once a week. The father and children speaks only once a week. The mother and child speaks only once a week. How will the relationship be? How is our relationship with the Lord? Are we speaking to Him every day? Not about asking, not about thanking. It's about speaking to Him, saying, God, I love your company. This is nice. I feel so much peace when I sit into your presence. I go into my prayer closet and I say, God, here I am. I don't want to talk anything, Lord. I just want to sit in your presence. I want to spend time with you. Try that. It gives you so much of peace in the midst of all the storms. That's my only refuge. I have a lot of reasons to say, God, I cannot come into your closets. Just like you, I have a lot of reasons to say, I don't have strength to pray. I just feel like crying, Lord. God is like, you want to cry? Cry. Cry in my presence. Because I am the only one who will wipe your tears. Rest all will mock at you for crying. It is important to spend time with the Lord. No matter you talk, no matter you worship, no matter you pray, just sit quietly in the presence of the Lord and you would know the difference. God has sealed you for a greater purpose. God has sealed you for a greater purpose. How many of you know who is Tara? T-E-R-A-H. Yes? You know Tara? Good. He was an idol worshipper. He used to make idols. He was the leader for the Jewish nation. Only first leader for Jewish nation who was an idol worshipper. You know, he gave birth a son. His name was Abraham. If Abraham, who was born of an idol worshipper, who made idols, who led people into idol worshipping, can come and do great and mighty things for the Lord, who can see God face to face and talk to him, how much more would God expect from you and me, who are born in a Christian family, who are We've been brought up with Christian virtues. We have read Bible from our childhood. God is expecting so much from Abraham. How much more will he ex expect from you and me? Remember Tara. If you read the Bible, you would know. He was a man known for idol worshipping. And his son was the only one in that entire city who knew God because he wanted to know God. God is available for everybody. Are you and I available for God? It is our attitude towards God that brings him close to us. We have been blaming our circumstances. Abraham could have blamed his circumstances. He could have told God, I don't know you because my father hasn't taught me about you. My father never spoke about you. My father never testified about you. He always testified about a different God, an idol. And why do you think I have to come to you? I don't even know you. But he had his ears open. He was receptive to the word of God. And that's why he came to be a mighty man of God. God is still talking to you and me. He's waiting for us to be obedient, receptive to his words. Are we ready? Are we ready? 
Genesis 12, 1 to 3, clearly says that Abraham was born of an idol worshiper. Can someone read that? Oh, I can read. I have it here. The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your land, your relatives, and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Don't misinterpret this words. I'm not asking you to leave your family and go. But I want you to leave the idol worshippers, whatever it is in your life. For Abraham, it was his land, it was his family, it was his relatives, because they were idol worshippers. What is the idol in your family? God wants you to leave that and go to the place where he is showing you, not to the place where you want to go. Now you have to sit with the Lord and identify the idols in your life, what you have been worshipping all this while, which is not from God. And God wants you to move away from that place. It could be your friends. It could be the money. It could be your gadgets. Oh, for me, it is Instagram. I don't know what is that for you. Someone sends me one reel. I end up spending 10 minutes, 15 minutes there because the reels don't stop after that. It could be one of the idols in your life. That 10 minutes, if you would have spent in the Lord's presence, imagine what difference it would have brought in your life. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. When? When you leave your father's house. That's for Abraham, not for you. If you leave your land, your relatives and your father's house and go to the land that I will show you. When you leave the idols in your life and you go to the place where God wants you to go, he's going to not only bless you, but he's going to make you a, oh, come on, you can, set, you, can, you can tell it loud. He's not just going to bless you, he's going to make you a blessing for others. You will be a blessing for others. All this while we've been asking God to bless us, but God wants you to be a blessing for others. How long are we going to ask God, God bless me, God give me this, God give me that. Let's start asking God, God make me a blessing for others. I will not be in the receiving end anymore. I will be in the giving end. Because you are my father. You are the creator. You have all the riches of this earth. I will no longer be in the receiving end. I will be in the giving end in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what God wants to do. I will bless those who bless you. That's the great blessing. Anybody who blesses you, I will bless them. Because you are my son, you are my daughter. And anybody who curses, I will curse them. And all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. What more do you need? But you need to sacrifice. You need to run away from the idols in your life. You need to go to the place where God wants you to go. And once you do that, you are going to be a blessing. Nobody can do anything to you, no matter how authoritative that person is. He might be ruling the entire nation, might be ruling the entire world, but he cannot stand against my father. Because he told me that if anybody blesses you, I will bless you. If anybody curses you, anybody harms you, I will harm him. Anybody curses you, I will curse him. That's my God, that's my father. And that's my friend. What a privilege. No? The creator of heaven and earth is my friend. I can call him my friend. I can call him my brother. I can call him my father. He, change, he does not change us, but we can change the way he, we look at him. You're depressed, go to your father. You're happy, go to your friend. You can treat him the way you want to treat him, but with dignity. Not the way you want, him to, do, want to treat him. You can treat him as a father. You can treat him as a friend, you can treat him as a brother. But he's always there for you and me. We all know how faith and obedience of Abraham had honored God and what a blessing he was for multitude after that. If God is expecting once again, I want to challenge this. If God can expect so much from Abraham, the son of idol worshipper, how much more will he expect from you and me? Abraham spent a lot of time alone in the presence of God. 
How much time are we spending in the prayer closets? How much time are we sitting in the presence of God, no matter you do anything or not, no matter you pray, worship, nothing? How much time are you spending in His presence? Let's see another person from the Bible. Gideon, we all know him pretty well, son of Josh. Again, Abraham had a different excuse, but he did not give that. He was son of an idol worshiper. But Gideon was like me. He was giving too many reasons. God, I cannot come. In 2006, if I remember correct, God wanted me to come to ministry. 2004 or 5, probably. I said, God, I'm too young. I have life to see. I will come. In 2006, by the time, I think 2003, he started calling me when I joined Wipro. I said, just now I got a good job, nice earning. Let me have fun, I'll come back to you. I got my first heart attack in 2003. Then I recovered, I thought, let's give it more. 2004, God called me again. I said, God, now that I have strength, let me enjoy for some time, second heart attack. 2005 and 6, and I mean, end of 2005, third heart attack, angio and everything. I got God, enough is enough, I am coming. Here I come into your presence. I was into full-time ministry for two years. Let's not go through that phase. When God is calling, be obedient. God can hit you, He can carry you again. But I don't want you to go through that pain. It's very painful, trust me. More than the medications, more than the uh, the... the, the hospitalization that you go through. The pain after three years when you know that, oh, if I would have come into the presence of Lord three years before, what greater things I could have done. How much peace I would have had within me. That will pain more. So today is the time. If you want to go back to Lord and say, God, here I am. Use me for the purpose that you have created me. God will be more than glad than you. Gideon was threshing wheat and he was so afraid of Midianites. He was, he was hiding himself when he was threshing the wheat. And that's when the angel came and told him, Lord appeared to him and commissioned him to go and fight the Midianites. This guy was giving reasons again. Let's see Judges 6 verses 15 and 16. Gideon tried to give excuse, saying, Oh Lord, how can I save Israel? Pardon me, Lord. Gideon replied, But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in the family. Look at the reason. God is calling. God is calling him and telling, Come, you will fight, I will be with you. And this guy is, no, 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 I am the least in the entire clan of Manasseh. And I am the least in my family. Why do you always choose the least person? There are people ab above me. My brothers are above me. My father is also still there. Take him. Why me, Lord? That's our problem. We don't say, try me, Lord. We always say, why me, Lord? Especially when there is a trial. When the blessing comes, we don't tell that. Do we? I don't tell. I don't know about you guys. I don't tell, why me, God, when the blessings come. But I've learned not to say, why me, Lord, when the trials come also. Because a lot of time I've told and now I'm not strong enough to tell or ask God, why me? I'm like, try me, God. You I mean, when God try, I mean, go, takes you to the trial, be more happy because he still trusts you. He still thinks that you can overcome this. He still thinks that you are part of his army. Such a joy, such a honor, right? So never say, why me, Lord? Gideon was threshing the wheat and the angel of the Lord appears to him and commissions him. And this guy tells, Lord, why me? Look at me. Even threshing the wheat, I am hiding myself. Whenever these Midianites will come and catch me, they can do whatever they want to do. They are so big in numbers, millions of soldiers. Why do you want to go and put myself in trouble? And the God assures him. The Lord answered, I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. What more do you 
want. God is calling you today. Your enemies might be powerful, wealthier, authoritative. They would have everything. You know how many guys this guy took to fight against millions of soldier, soldiers that Midianites had? How many guys did this guy take? 200 to 300. Just 300 men he took. And all these 300 men were not a great warriors. They were all rejected peace. They were all like, you, you, you're just a count in this army. You make no difference in this army. Those are the guys that Gideon took to fight against Midianites whom he feared, who are terribly stronger. What is your enemy today? Who is your enemy today? Anything, it could be people, it could be thoughts, it could be your character, it could be your friends, your relatives, whoever it is, your bosses, anybody. God is telling to you today, I will be with you. And you shall defeat the Midianites. And none will be alive. Your, soul, your, your enemies will not be alive. Because God is with you. It is not about the soldiers that you take with you. It's not about your power, your experience in battle. Nothing and absolutely nothing. It is just because God's grace. Not by power, not by might. But by... That's the secret of winning the battle. God, the same God who was with Gideonite. He took a person who is the youngest in the family... Not just that, he's the weakest in the family. The man of fear, fearful man. The least in the clan of Manasseh. And God can use Gideonite. Can't he use you and me? He is ready to use. Are you ready to surrender yourself and say, God, here I am, use me. Use me, Lord. Just like God spoke to Gideon and I'm not sure who the Lord is speaking to today. You are empowered to fight your enemies, the biggest army like Midian, Midianites in your life. One million people can stand against you, but God is telling to someone today, fight your battle trusting that I am with you. And when I am with you, nobody can stand against you. None of your enemies will be alive. God wants you to march forward. Amen. You don't need great weapons. You don't need experience. You don't need talents. All you need is faith. You need to believe that you're called for a greater purpose. And you know what happened? The same Gideonite later was renamed as Jerubabel. Why? God used him to destroy the idol of Baal. And the father who was worshipping the Baal finally supported him, stating that Baal could not save himself. Read Judges 6.32. Baal cannot do anything. He is not able to save his own altar. What is he going to do to my son? Let my son Gideon go. He renamed him. He said he will no longer be called Gideon. He will be called Jerubal. Jerubal. God is going to rename you when you go ahead and break all the idols in your life. He's going to call you my own son, my own daughter. He's going to give you a new name. Now don't Expect a baptism service after that. No christening after that. The name is not going to change. But the way God is going to look at you. You're not going to get a new name. No change in your names. No certificates are going to be renamed now. But God. When he looked at what Gideon did. He renamed him as Jerubabel. The same Lord is going to call you different. He's going to call you my daughter. He's going to call you my son. You have done my will. I am happy. Your idols needs to be broken. Destroyed. Completely it's, it needs to be destroyed. And God is with you. He's not asking you to go do it yourself and come back. Then I'll call you my daughter and my son. No. God said I will come with you. 
I will fight your battle. Many of us could have asked God, God, if all that you can do it yourself, why do you want me to be in the limelight? Why do you want me to go and do? No, God wants you to do. It's not because God cannot do. If not you, God will find another person. He is not lacking people. He just wants you to do because he loves you. He wants to put you in the forefront because he wants to make you a greater nation. He wants to lift you up from the place where you are right now. Not that God cannot do. If today Gideon did not come, God would have brought someone else. But just because Gideon surrendered, he was renamed. He was able to bring every idol down to ashes. God is calling you and me today. God is calling you and me today. Are we ready to go ahead and break all the idols in our life? I'm going to end shortly. I'm going to tell one story and I'm going to end. We're going to pray for a bigger cause after this. There was a guy who went to his guru and he was asking, Guru, I have a question. The guru is like, okay, go ahead. It's like, what is life and death? Where did we come from and where are we going? His guru did not answer. After a few minutes, he said, go to the next room and bring this specific book. This guy went inside. He thought, okay, that will be answered in this book. Let me read and find out. He went inside the room and he came back. The same speed, he went inside. He was very angry. He's like, what do you think? The room is so dark. I can't even see the books. How will I find that specific book? Guru, very patiently, he took a candle. He lit the candle. He said, now go, find that book and come. So he took the candle. He was able to find the book. He found the book. He came out. And the guru turned the candle off. And this guy was waiting. Okay, he will ask some chapter. He will ask me to read some chapter and I will find the answer where I am coming from, where will I go and all those things. But the guru, for his surprise, asked a different question. He's like, when I lit the candle, where did the light come from? And when I turned it off, where did the light go? He's like, I asked you a question and you're not giving me an answer. You're asking me a question in return. He's like, no, no, you tell me. Where did the light come from? When I lit it on, where did the light go when I turned it off? It's like, how do I know? The why do you want to know? Where did you come from? And where will you go? Many times, the clashes specifically in our nation is that this is the Lord. This God is the best God. This is the true God. This is where we came from. This is our heritage. This is our gene. And you know what? This is where we will go. We have been fighting about things which happened even before our birth. We do not know where we came from. Bible tells us where we came from, but that is all done and buried. We do not know where we will go. Eternity is always there for us, but are we ready for eternity? Are we going to be in eternity? Yes, but where? Heaven on earth, we do not know. But the Guru told him, the time when you had light in your hand, you were able to find the book that you intended to find. You have a very small time when the light is there in your hand. Fulfill your purpose. Don't be worried about where you came from, where you're going to go. But the time that God has given you, the light in your hand, is to find your purpose, is to fulfill your purpose, is to do what you're, you're purposed for. The ultimate goal of God creating you is very short time that you got to fulfill that. You got the light in your hand. Any time someone will come and blow that life out, your life is uncertain. Don't be worried about something that you can't see, but be worried about what you're seeing right now. Are you doing what you are supposed to do when you have the light in your hand? Is what we all need to be pondering about. How many of us are worried about what we don't know? Where are we going to go? Hell, heaven, eternity, is that an eternity? You can still know it. You can be mindful of it. But you cannot keep pondering on that and miss the opportunities that you have when you have the light in your hand. Amen? God is calling you. God is calling me. God is calling us today. We might be coming out from Abraham's family where the fathers, generations, everybody were idol worshippers, but we are called for a different purpose. We might be weak like Gideon, the weakest of the family, weakest in the 
entire clan of Manasseh. We cannot tell God our weakness. We need to start telling the world what is our strength and our strength is God Almighty. We cannot tell the God. We cannot go tell God I am weak because He created me, He created you. His creations cannot be weak. His creations are perfect. God cannot do mistakes. If he's calling you, he knows what is the power in you. He knows that he's going to stand with you. He knows the result of the war or the battle that you're going to take. And that's why he's calling you. He's the only God. He calls you to fight a battle knowing that you're going to win. He will never put you into a battle knowing that you will lose. We have a greater battle ahead on May 13th. We have a greater battle. We have the light. We have the reason and we are obligated to pray for it. How many of us are praying for the elections? Isn't it our responsibility to pray? We cannot crib once the candle is lit off. We have a very, very short time where we have the light around us where we can do what we are supposed to do. If we miss the opportunity, you wouldn't get it again. Can I call Pramodana here so that we all can in one accord pray for the upcoming elections? It is our responsibility. You have oaths or you have enrolled for your oathing or not. You are supposed to pray for our nation. It is our responsibility. Oh, to Pramodana for this prayer. I just leave you with this thought. Ponder what is the idol in your lives and start breaking idols one by one and surrender yourself for the will of God. God bless you.